In today's video, I'm going to go ahead and start dressing up the uh, chopper a little bit. So now that I've got the basic configuration set, there's a few things that I'd like to take a look at. And we're going to get started with the back end here. One thing that I don't really care for too much is the way that this tube comes in at this level and then exits at that level. Kind of gives the bike a discontinuity that kind of chops it up a bit, I think. So, what I plan to do is to uh, cut the, uh, the mount here and then move this tube down so that it flows all the way from here to there in a single line. So I have my cuts made here and I thought that I'd be able to just bend this bar down uh, seeing it's a smaller diameter. But no way. I can flex it a little bit, but I can't bend it. So it's time to pull out the old settling torch again. So I've got the bar moved down. Looks like, you know, from a distance, like there's a little bit of a kink there. Uh, well, because there is. But I think it looks okay now. So the next step before I start getting the back end of this bike put back together is I need to fill in some of these gaps, I believe. So, I'm going to uh, uh, get a piece of cardboard and trace out my parts and, uh, and cut out some, uh, some steel and fill those parts in. So I got my gaps filled up, at least uh, what I had in mind for now. And I'm going to go ahead and throw some paint on this and give it a gander and see if I'm uh, satisfied with the back end of this bike. So I got the back end of the bike back together, and I kind of like that look better. So it does look a little kinked there where the uh, support and the wheel bolts on, but um, well, we'll see. I'm not sure. So now that I've changed uh, the geometry of the back here, the trouble I have is my chain guard uh, interferes with that too. So, I think what I might do is I have this other chain guard from a different bicycle. And it also interferes, but it only needs a little bit of a trim back here, and then it might fit. So, I'm going to mess around with that for a little bit and see where we go. So, I went ahead and welded on an extension. Uh, for this front uh, screw hole mount and then I had to cut the length down of the chain guard uh, a bit uh, and it's really short now because the chain goes on quite a bit beyond this so so I went ahead and cut it down rounded it off a little bit with the sander drilled a new hole I need to weld this mount here so that uh, that the back of the chain guard will get held up it used to be uh, on the back of this, uh, but that's not going to work anymore because this uh, the seat stay is now in the way. So, but either way, I think uh, that'll work, and I kind of like the look. I don't know if it's just the contra contrasting color or the shape of it, but uh, I think it looks okay. So I got the chain guard on, and I think it looks pretty cool. So. You know, the part of what I was trying to accomplish here and worked out pretty well is, you know, on, on another bike this would have been much higher. So, it kind of looks like it's, uh, like it's been lowered a bit. So, anyway. I think that, uh, that's it for the back end, for now anyway. So, for the next part of this project, I want to kind of dress up this fork a little bit. So, uh, riding it with the wheel out there, I don't have any indication that uh, that this fork isn't strong enough, but uh, I'd still like it to be a little bit more stiff. And I think it'd also look pretty good if I add a second bar that comes off the back of this. And then also, I'm going to add a support in between here, since this is quite a long section. So I cut the back of this frame off, and what I'm going to do is take the back end of the seat stay and the chain stay and weld them together for a tube. And then that's going to be my 
fork support. So the plan is to weld this on here like this. So, at least for now. I'm going to go inside and think about it for a little while. But I think it's going to add a lot of rigidity to the fork. So there's another way would be to weld it on like this, which would also add quite a bit of rigidity to the fork, maybe in a more meaningful way. So anyway, think it over a little bit and finish it up. Well, I went ahead and opted for the uh, the supports on the top, and I think it came out looking pretty cool. So uh, the fork is painted black now instead of white because I ran out of white paint. So paint that's on it right now is just to keep it from rusting until I get everything done and then I'll paint it with its final color. Kind of opting right now for a real bright like a chartreuse or a neon orange or something like that. So but I'm pretty happy with the front fork and I'm not ecstatic about the back but pretty happy with that too. So next thing I want to cover it's something that's going to make a lot of bicycle guys cringe, but any bike that you ride on the bike on the road really kind of needs a kickstand. So it's kind of a pain not having one, always having to find something to lean it against. I have a mountain bike that doesn't have a kickstand, but usually when I'm on my mountain bike, I'm riding like the whole time. So I don't really need a kickstand. But for this, I ride it on the roads. Uh, sidewalks, go with a ride for a ride with my wife, or uh, to sit on the beach, or for an ice cream, or something like that. So I'm always looking to park it. So I'm gonna have a solution here. And the craziest little kickstand you ever saw. It holds up the bike. Does what I need. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day.